بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين وأصحابه الأكرمين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وهدى إلى يوم الدين وعلينا معهم وفيهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهدي قلبي بحق سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Alhamdulillah, it's the 25th night of Ramadan. It is one of the odd nights of the last 10 nights. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever blessings and gifts and mercy and forgiveness and openings that he gives on this night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us a great portion of that. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. For us and the entire Ummah, inshaAllah ta'ala, ya arham rahimin and for our brothers and sisters in humanity, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, uh, that He gives them and disseminates among their hearts the lights of guidance and He grants them openings that bring them to Islam and that bring them to worshipping Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the way of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We are in the 25th juz of the Qur'an. And the verses that we'll look at today are uh, from Surah Al-Zukhruf. And this is really interesting. These verses here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us of how the Meccans responded to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and some of, the, uh, some of the arguments that they made and how also similar arguments were brought forth by the Pharaoh against Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And it teaches us to be very careful of having a very superficial, worldly perspective on things, only looking at the outward. And that realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gifts and the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses are people of inward realities who might not necessarily be very impressive in a worldly sense outwardly. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ And they exclaimed, the disbelievers, if only this Qur'an was revealed to a great man from one of the two cities. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he's the greatest. He is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the most noble, the most virtuous, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But what lens are they seeing it through? They're the ones who are blinded. They're the ones who are limited and not seeing things right. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is it they who distribute your Lord's mercy? You're the one who decides who gets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gifts and who doesn't? Allah says, we alone have distributed their very livelihood among them in this worldly life and raised some of them in rank above others so that they may employ others in service. This is the way that the worldly things work. But your Lord's mercy this special internal unseen gift that's something that relates to the akhirah and the real rank that someone has with Allah is far better than whatever wealth they amass. Were it not that people might be tempted to become one community of disbelievers, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we would have supplied the homes of only those who disbelieve in the most merciful with silver roofs and silver stairways to ascend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these worldly gifts that you think is the measure of someone's rank with Allah, when you say that, you know, these prophets and messengers, they don't have much of this stuff. If you measure that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we would have given every disbeliever silver homes and silver stairways and the most elaborate of worldly things because it's not really what matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives the dunya to those that he loves and those that he does not love. But he only gives the deen to those that he loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on describing these houses and as well as silver gates and thrones to recline on. The disbelievers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we would have given them that if not other people would have been attracted and also followed their way of disbelief. And we would have given them ornaments of gold. Yet, all this is no more than a fleeting enjoyment in this worldly life. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَالْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And the hereafter, which is far superior, 
is with your, uh, with your Lord is only for those who are mindful of him. They can have the silver homes and the uh, thrones and, you know, people are obsessed with that. There's whole entire TV shows where they go to celebrities' houses and just look at all the stuff that they have. And sometimes people become enamored by that. Oh, look at this person. He's famous. He's rich. He's an inventor. Oh, look at their, they've got so much. They're advanced. They have progress. They have all technology. But do they have Iman? Do they have the most essential gift? So really, what do they have? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and whoever turns a blind eye to the reminder of Ar-Rahman, the All-Merciful, we place at the disposal, disposal of each a devilish one as their close associate, Qareen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will have ma'ishatan dhanka. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Even if they have homes made of silver. Whoever turns away from the Qur'an and turns away from Allah's reminder, they're going to have a miserable life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that we will give them a devil who will be their close companion. And they, that devil will hinder them from the right way. And they'll think that they're rightly guided. Oh, we're making progress. We have money. We have technology. We have all of these things. We have power. And in reality, they're astray. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salam and what the Pharaoh said to him. Naam. Indeed, we sent Moses with our signs to Pharaoh and his chiefs. And he said, I am a messenger of the Lord of the worlds, just like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. But as soon as he came to them with our signs, with miracles, he has the proof. They laughed at him. Why? What does the Pharaoh say? Although every sign we showed them was greater than the one before, ultimately we seized them with torment so that they might return to the right path. Then they pleaded, O mighty magician, pray to your Lord on our behalf by virtue of the covenant he made with you. They thought he was a magician. They're still seeing things with the lens of worldliness. What does the Pharaoh say? The Pharaoh says he's trying to keep people away from the truth. He calls out to his people and says, Oh, my people, am I not the sovereign over Egypt as well as these streams that are flowing at my feet? Can you not see? Do you see what I have? You should follow me. Don't follow this person who doesn't have worldly things. And then he once again tries to detract from Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Am I not better than this, literally, this person who's a nobody, who can hardly express himself? But what you don't understand is that you're seeing things through the lens of worldliness. If you looked at things with the eye of Basira, you would have seen the most beloved of Allah's creation on the face of the earth before you. The one who will guide you to Allah and enter you into paradise if you humbled yourself. This is one of Ulul Azm. This is Kalimullah. And the Meccan said the same thing about Habibullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. You have to see, you have to humble yourself and see with the eye of Iman. And follow the truth and recognize the truth and follow its people no matter how they appear in a worldly sense. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, Maybe a dusty and disheveled person who people would reject from their doorsteps. If they came knocking on the door, they say, don't open the door. Let this person go away. If that person swore an oath by Allah, Allah would immediately fulfill it for them because of how beloved they are to Allah. So we should not be people who are uh, deluded by the way things appear outwardly, but that we look through the lens of Iman and with the lens of the Basira. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, and I'll end with this, when he entered Jerusalem, they said, now you're going to be among these, you know, Byzantine priests, and you're going to, now we're going into a, a totally different realm of dealing with different nations and peoples. And he was wearing a, a garment that had uh, a patched up areas that he sewed and patched up. They said, now you're going to meet all these people. You can't dress like that. We need to get you a nice, new, very uh, uh, luxurious garment. He put it on for a little bit, and then he changed his mind. And he said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ We are a people. Allah honored us with Islam. Allah honored us with an internal gift from him, from Rahmah. 
and hidayah and guidance from that is the most valuable thing and nothing in the world can ever compare or replace it or enhance it it is enhanced when we turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah to make us people who follow the truth and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the love of the prophets and the messengers and the people of guidance. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illuminates our basira so that we see things through iman. And we always follow the truth and follow the prophets. And we're not deluded by the way that things appear outwardly. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.